Hey guys, in this video we will talk about how to solve a palindrome challenge without actually reversing a string. In the previous video we have done a palindrome challenge by using built-in methods. Um, sometimes your interviewer will tell you, can you please do this solution without using built-in methods? That really gives them an opportunity to assess your knowledge of the coding language and um, your ability to think on the spot. All right, so before jumping into code, we want to pseudocode the solution as we normally do. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to compare the first letter of the string with the last letter of the string. As an example, we have here um, a palindrome ABBA, as we know. We want to compare A in the beginning of the string with A in the end of the string. Then we want to go inwards and compare second letter B with the second to the last letter B. So how can we actually do that? Well, we want to get the length of the string. We want to divide it by two because in the palindrome, half of the string should be the exact equivalent with the last half of the string. So once we compare the first half, we don't need to do the exact same process backwards. Um, we want to utilize a um, for loop in my example, and we want to have an if statement to check if the value is falsy. So if the beginning of the letter um, doesn't compare with the last letter, then we will want to exit the for loop and um, return false. It is not a palindrome. Otherwise, it needs to keep going until we um, get halfway through the string. So now let's get into code. First, we're going to create a variable. And let's call it string length. And we are going to take the string that we have been provided right here and we are going to get its length like so. All right, so now let's make a for loop where we are starting at zero. We want to go until string length divided by two because we only want to compare the first half of the string and once we do so we don't want to repeat ourselves the second time around and we are going to increment our index going up. Now that we have created a for loop we are going to move on and create an if statement within that for loop to really check if the string at any point of time is not equal to the string and its equivalent index at the end of that string. So I will go through it as we are writing the actual if statement. So we have the if statement, the string that we have been provided right here. At any point in time, so at any index, does not equal to that string at length that we have minus one which is at the very last part of the string pretty much telling JavaScript to check the back of that string minus index and what minus index does is just making sure that however many spaces we are occupying from the front of the string is the exact same amount of spaces that we are taking up from the back of the string. So that way we're comparing A to A, B to B. Hopefully that makes a little bit more sense now. Um, and we are going to say if it is not equal, we are going to return false. And we're going to exit the for loop. And if we actually have a palindrome on our hands, we want to make sure that we are returning true right here, outside of the for loop and outside of the if statement. Why do we need to return true outside of the for loop? Well, because we want to make sure that the for loop runs through the entire um, half of the string if 
um, it is an actual palindrome. If we had put it inside the for loop, it would quit the loop as soon as um, it reaches false as inside the if statement, or it finds any matches within the string. So that would not really give us a true response whether a string is a palindrome or not. In the next video, we will talk about reversing an integer. Um, so stay tuned and hopefully you have found this video helpful.